<laughs> Don't do okay, that. I'm, really? This is I'm the anime and this is You know what's so funny? Is I got, I think we supposed to be old hands or something. Are we supposed to be old hands? I don't know. That's no? a little cheesy. That's a that's a little Is it cheesy? We man, people to people in, in real relationships, they already know what's up. <laughs> Okay, so how has our sex life? Is that what you want to go for? I don't know, you tell me. Go for it, you brought it up. <laughs> That's not what I was going to say, but okay, go ahead. No, we no I, I don't care. Well, fellas, mm -hmm. as you will learn, or Supporting spouses, right. supporting spouses. As you learn, in your, ask your questions while you're in those offices too, because that's what I did. I turned to Brown, yes, and <laughs> the thing is, they have they have this bottle of uh, this advertisement for this bottle of lube. So I looked at it, <laughs> and I was like, "Yo, you know that triggered triggered out the question. Yeah, you know, can we still have sex and or whatever?" They say yes, and they have that that free lube there. It's a uh, water based. Water -based. Yeah. Water-based lubes for uh, for you to use because, of course, the body's not working right. That's not saying the person won't, your significant other won't be in the mood to do it. It's just everything is drawn to uh, fight this 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 infection in your yeah. body. Yeah. So, yeah. So you still have sex. You still do stuff. It's just it changes. And lately, with the progression that's of everything, time, yeah. you know, time? that's been the last thing on my mind. I just want to make sure. Make sure that she's doing good, that she's okay, or make sure she's not overstressed. Yeah. And stuff. But at the same time, maintain maintaining my myself, my body, make sure I'm not overstressed, making sure I don't let, you know, outside world or let things get to me. Yeah. So you have to maintain your mental health as well as And we're in couples your therapy. We do couples therapy, which helps also because um it, it's easy to misdirect that energy. You know, I, you hear a lot about it. I saw a clip of, um, it was James Baldwin talking to, who was he talking to? Was this on Talk Show? It was, was a thing, it was, uh, I want to say Nikki Giovanni. And she, he, she made a comment about you go out there, you're at work and stuff, you smile, and then you get home, and then I have to get the quote unquote, like real you, the ugly you. And they were talking about, um, you know, you have to smile and still maintain your job and kind of, kind of put on for people. But then when you get home and you strip it all down, then it seems like your spouse is the person that gets like the worst of you. And you have to be conscious of that because it's so easy to do when you have so much kind of weighing you down. And so that's that's why I like the fact that we are in couples therapy because you know, some like uh, we had, uh, they tried to put me on some medication for my back spasms and stuff. And we researched the medication and it was like an antidepressant. The mirror block. Yeah. yeah. Medicine's supposed to uh, yeah, block, block the signals. So yeah, that so you don't the, feel the pain. So I won't it's feel not the a pain. pain reliever, it's just something. Mm -hmm. But along with that, like I said, it's antidepressant and shoot it. You have so many different mood swings. I um how do you handle my mood swings? With understanding. <laughs> with understanding and patience. Now so not saying I'm perfect, because as we know, sometimes I'll be like, yo, you know, you go sit the fuck down. <laughs> or like chill. Yeah. Or be like, look, I, I tell her though, look, I understand what's going on with you, but you need to redirect, redirect, yeah. and and think about everybody else's feelings at the same time, yeah. like. And you gotta understand too, like what helps, I think, is just knowing that the reason, like you said, ignorance of of educating yourself and understanding, okay, well, why is she in this mood swing, or or what's going on, or you know, where's the frustration coming from, and we talk about all of that, mm -hmm. yeah. So you do a lot of holding. He, he'll put me in my place, but then turn around and cuddle me to make sure I'm fine. So we balance it out. Do you have anything, yes. any advice to give to the spouses? Like what's the, if you can, if, if you can give one, like just solid, regardless of the stage a person's in or medicine or no medicine, because we're not doing medicine. Um, 
just one thing that you feel like a spouse of a cancer um, patient, like the one thing that you hold on to more than anything else? That I hold on to? Yeah. Really, it's, it's not about me. It's not about me. It's under the understanding of it. What your significant other is going through, and uh, just being there for for them, because yeah. it is it's it's easy for some people to fall victim, and talking about for the other others for the supporting spouse to fall victim, or play victim, or feel like things are happening to them. And just remember, you know, like well, one life goes on and everything is temporary. Yeah, it's just it's a set stage. And hopefully, you know, well, not hopefully for those who have a more aggressive cancer or different at stage three, stage four. Just hopefully, you sit back and once again think about them and think about like, hey, I'm gonna try my best to make your last days as heavenly as possible. Yeah. Try to leave you heaven on earth before you go, because once again, everything is temporary and it passes by. Yeah, we're down to three. We're down to three treatments, and it felt like forever. Yeah, and it's only been like. Do you think it felt like forever? Mm -hmm. I don't know. To me, time is fast. <laughs> Year has gone by, flew by. It did. Well, some days go by slower than others. We feel like that. Make sure you keep keep yourself happy at the same time. Yeah, you have to maintain Personal your life. Yeah, you yeah. got to maintain your life. You have to, it can't, and I'm the person with cancer saying this, it can't be all about you. You will suffocate your spouse. If you have a village around you, let your village step in, let your spouse step out. You will suffocate your spouse and you cannot be, I know it's a lot going on, but you have to love your spouse enough to want them to maintain their sanity, maintain their joy and happiness as much as possible during this process in order to give it to you. So it's still, it's still a cycle because on my down days, he's the person who is there to, to bring in the positivity. I can't expect him to give me something he doesn't have. And if I'm constantly, you know, weighing him down with this and that and, and then you know you got to be here all the time I mean, he doesn't miss a, a doctor's appointment he doesn't miss a chemo or anything like that but just something as small as him being in school full time for himself to work on his personal goals you know it cannot it can't uh you cancer patient take care of you first as much as you can, as much as you can. and then you have hopefully you have some people around you for support to step in when you can't. And if you were married, nine times out of 10, that first line of support is your spouse. And that's fine. But if you have another line of support, you know, just like a basketball game, you know, you got to sub some out, let people get rest. Um, and just, you know, be respectful of, of their life as well. You know, especially if your journey is longer than I met somebody that's like, that was going through chemo like for 17 months. And and I know somebody who's still going through chemo for, and they, they're on like their third year. So, I mean, that's a long time to expect somebody to just stop everything you're doing and just do work cancer, work cancer, work cancer and expect them to not, you know, be weighed down. I mean, you know how you feel on your bad days as far as being weighed down. So just be mindful. Like, like he said earlier, it doesn't give you an excuse to be a douche or an a-hole or anything like that. And and reach into yourself and into that part of you. First of all, it starts in your head. Let's go there. Which he is constantly reminding me of. Your mentality towards the thing makes all the difference in the world. So let's try to keep it positive up here. And once you get it positive up here, there are times you have to reach within yourself because there are days where you can't do anything for you. And he'll ask, you know, what can I do for you? What, how can I help? And there's nothing There's nothing you can do. And on those days, too, I just want to be left alone. 
So it's not even like him being there and holding me. It's like, just leave me be. So in those moments, you have to reach inside of yourself into that place where God lives and, you know, stir that thing up and within yourself and your spirituality, your mind, your spirit, your soul, it all works together to get you through this thing. Um, and, and everybody in heaven's folks. Some people are doing this thing alone, so you don't have a family support system. You gotta work it within yourself first, and then it comes around, and it helps those that are around you kind of handle your situation as well. So, uh, I'm so blessed. Yeah.